are you? I'm good. Thank Man, you. I haven't seen What's you in a, I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah. What's when you check out? This is a question I was asking the show. When you decide you're going to just go cuz you last year said I'm taking a break. Yes. How do you hide? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't I don't think I hide. Like there's always stuff to do even if it's not necessarily like playing shows. Um, but I don't know. I just I'm a, I'm kind of a homebody. I'm just the first picture we saw Long was minute. of the, the girl at the yoga place. Were you doing yoga? And she said, hey, let's take a selfie. Oh, oh, on vacation. Oh, the girl from Below Deck. Is that who you're talking about? I don't know. Is she from a reality show? Yes, on Bravo. Remember? Yeah, we were we were on, on vacation. I was, yeah. I was like, um, can we like stand in the shadows? And I made my friend take the picture. So that wasn't in away. town? No. Oh, because I was like, man, I would be so irritated. No, it's people are excited, you know, like the only the only thing my brain has trouble um, dealing with is I just forget. And I'm like at the grocery store trying to get like dinner for my family. You know what I mean? And then I'm, somebody comes up to me. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> when you were performing at the ACMs on Sunday night and you come out and you perform and it's your first time to perform. We hadn't seen you in a while. Yeah. And you finish. When you go back to the back, what happens? Um, I hug people. <laughs> I hug my people who was are that like emotional. Was it super emotional? Yeah. Um. I mean, it. There's just been a lot that's gone on in life over the past year, and it's always really nerve wracking introducing new music. I mean, basically in that way because the song came out just a couple days before, um, before the ACM. So it was just kind of like I, I, I was super nervous and. It's like I felt like I'd had never been on a stage before. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like you're looking out at the audience, and yeah, it's crazy. Because you're so in the moment, did you see how long the people stayed and stood and clapped? Like, or were you like, "Oh my goodness, I really can't see anything." I get super weirded out by clapping, and I know that sounds I know that sounds so weird, but like when I'm performing, it's like I'm I'm in the song and then as soon as the song's over, it's like I'm Carrie again and I just want to kind of get off the stage. I know that sounds weird, but like it kind of kept going and I'm like, where's the walls? Like looking above me, like aren't those walls supposed to come down? Why isn't somebody, is there something wrong? Is somebody not pressing a button that they need to press? And I'm like trying to back off the stage. But I mean, it was definitely overwhelming um, that it was, I just don't know what to do with myself because I'm just stuck out there <laughs> you walk off the stage and the next award is if i'm remembering correctly it was the um the vocal event yeah and, it, and you and keith won yeah so did they go hey carrie by the way watch the screen in case you win yeah we like went kind of around back over to where the runway thing was in the middle of the stage and then um i stood there and watched the monitor because it was like the crowd going, yeah. And then you walked off and you came back on. It was like a wrestler re, re coming yeah. into the ring after they had won the match before. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, but it was, it was super cool. I was glad Keith um, said words that made sense. I feel like I, I feel like I didn't. <laughs> what, what, what's going through your head before you perform at the ACMs? First time back, that you didn't walk the carpet. You know, yeah. it's the first time anyone had. Everybody was waiting to see your performance. Yeah, I mean, I felt like we definitely wanted to keep everything music focused. Um, and uh, I don't know. I was just going through lyrics, I guess, in my head. <laughs> Please sing all the words right. Do you have a monitor that tells you the lyrics, or are you no, just going by brain? No, not not yet. It's it's probably inevitable at some point in my career where I'll be like, oh my gosh, too many songs in my head. Um, but no, it's it's all it's all up here. <laughs> so tell me about this the song. <clears throat> um, I mean, it's it's kind of just all about emotions and. You know, I feel like as as humans, we're just kind of expected to have our crap together all the time. And um, being being a mom and a wife and trying to navigate all that we do and um, it just gets every once in a while, I feel like there's just a bubble over of emotion. And we're kind of discouraged, I think, from doing that in life. And sometimes you just have to. And it might be unattractive and it might be a sad ugly moment but it has to happen and it's okay hmm mm -hmm. look at this i mean anything I you can want to support that yeah that's what mm -hmm. i like thank you feels like something you <laughs> feel like i'm in my closet crying pretty <laughs> amy often. <laughs> pretty often yes <laughs> that's yeah. that's that's your cry place my closet so yeah I, it was the only place i can retreat where i like my kids and my husband and nobody can find me <laughs> i feel like my car 
oh, be that's a, probably a better. good crying place. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you just feel kind of safe. It's like a small space. There's probably people that can actually see me at stoplights and whatnot. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. oh well. Amy has two two kids now. She yes. just adopted them from Haiti. Yeah. And so she was telling us that she has her. She walks through her bedroom, through her bathroom, into her closet, and then shuts her door. Yeah. Well, because there's three doors: and then, the door to the bedroom, the door to the bathroom, the door to the closet, and I can shut them all. So then she sits like, down and cries, mm-hmm. and not too. not not pretty. No, no, I cry pretty. Oh, oh. <laughs> she's yeah. the one that cries pretty. Yeah. Well, now I'm empowered that I, my cries are pretty. You're the uh, normally I, I thought I had the ugly cry, but cry pretty. Is this pretty nerve wracking to you to get going again? Because I mean, you've been gone. Yeah. um, I mean, it's just, you know, it's cycles. And I actually enjoy doing things in that way. Um, I feel like there's there's a lot of people that seem to like like be on tour and be like all up in it all the time. And I'm like, how do you how do you live a life to write about? How do you I don't know. There has to be some kind of balance. So it's nice to kind of be at home a little bit more and spend get to spend more time on like the writing process and producing and all that stuff. And um, and then it's time to release it into the world. It's the first time you produced a record? Yeah. Yeah. What does I mean, that I, mean for you? Like we, when you're producing the record, what are you doing in the room? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm lucky enough that I feel like I've always been able to um, convey what I want. And people have always been very receptive. And producers that I've worked with have been absolutely amazing and wanted me to be happy and listen to me when I'm like, I don't like this. What is this? Where's this? Can we do this? And um, I just feel like now I get to actually take a little more ownership in that. And um, I mean, I I have been there from the beginning and when we're, you know, moving stuff around and figuring out arrangements and um, getting to work with band and overdubs and comping my own vocals, which I feel like every artist should do. It's very humbling. <laughs> What's that mean, comping your own vocals? Listening to yourself a lot and trying to decide what sounds good <laughs> or what's off pitch and and I'm I'm one that I don't I'm not a fan of autotune I'd rather just go in and sing it again um but it's it's nice to sit and listen and be like well I thought I was hitting that and I was not <laughs> so, so I can do it I can do it let me go back in you won't allow any manipulation of your voice it's not any manipulation it depends on why we're doing it I would rather just go in and sing it again if it's a tuning issue but sometimes if it's a, a vibe issue or if there's some sort of um, something going on it that makes it sound a different way. Like yeah, something it, you couldn't it's not fix for, by going right, back. Right. It's not for being off key purposes. Carrie Underwood is here. Your wrist. Let's start there. What happened to your wrist? Uh, I fell down. <laughs> right or left one? I fell down. My right wrist. So are you right handed? Yeah. So that probably set you back on all your handwriting classes, huh? Oh, yes. All my handwriting. It set me back on the most frustrating part was trying to work out with with a broken wrist um, and uh, just how much it can throw off your world having an appendage that is there, but you just can't use it. So what happened, though? Like what, how, how'd you fall or did you fall? Yeah, I, I just I was taking the dogs out to go pee pee one last time and um I just I tripped and there was one step and I went to I didn't let go of the leashes <laughs> priorities um so that's why my left hand's fine but uh, I went to catch myself and I just missed a step and if I had fallen anywhere else I would have been perfectly fine but it was one one step that messed everything up the email comes in and says I may look different and when you walked in, I was going, I don't know what she's going to look well, like. I, I will be honest. I was like, I don't know what she's going to look like. Am I going to? But I don't, like, I don't see it. Thank you. Um, I've, I've been very fortunate in the healing process. And I mean, when we, I was, I was lucky that when it happened, everything was kind of shutting down in the music world and we had the holidays and stuff like that. But um, it's, I was at a point where I didn't, I didn't know how things were going to end up. I didn't know it was going to go on. I didn't know what it was going to heal like. Um, where did you fall on your face? Like the side of your face? Uh, your, oh, around your, my your mouth. Front. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think when it's that bad? Because I have a scar. I'm, I'm from my sternum all the way down to like my, my bone. And that scar just never went away. Yeah. Did you think with your face that, that was a, the scar would always be there when it first happened? Um. Yeah. And I, I think it still will. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's you just don't know how things are going to heal or end up. And I, I felt like it was it was important to me as I 
started resuming my life again and going to the grocery store and taking my kid to school and stuff like that, I was like, okay, somebody's going to creep on me (laughs) at the grocery store. And, um, you know, people are going to be like, what's what happened when they posted on Instagram? Imagine the doctor that gets Carrie Underwood at anything. Mm. It doesn't even matter what it is. Imagine she comes in for a foot fungus. Imagine you go into the doctor and he's like, Gout. he's like, which has not happened. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm just, By the way. imagine that you're the doctor. You got the chart out and you're like, let's see who's on the foot fungus list today. Oh, Carrie Underwood. You can't even tell your friends. Yeah. Mm. Do you make doctors sign extra stuff? No, I mean, they, they can't tell people yeah. anything anyway, right? No, they can't. They're not supposed to. They're not. No. I feel like, because I had to go in. Cause That's like a like a HIPAA thing, right? Yes. Well, uh, listen, I'm going to be honest. What? Somebody, somebody. Well, no, no, no. I have a, When I was younger, I had a hemorrhoid, right? Because from running. I, yeah. You get them when you run. I was training for a triathlon. I he think, was like 25. My, <laughs> I think my doctor at the time told somebody. Right. Yeah, because it got out. Next thing you know, you told us. Well, that could have been the thing too. Yeah, but still, it could have been you. You it, didn't sign HIPAA. He declared himself the voice of young hemorrhoids. After it was out, though, mm. I was like you. I was walking to the grocery store, going, "Is someone gonna take a picture of my hemorrhoid?" <laughs> yeah, they could. They could have been. I think this is smart. You could get some kind of endorsement right now. I've tried preparation H. You have. Yeah, I've yeah. tried. No one so wants to have just, me endorse it. Yeah, Metamucil in the house. Fiber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, look at you. So wait, what's the deal with music? Are you? You know, I know you have the record. But are you announcing any sort of tour yet? Um, not yet. Um, we're we're figuring that out. How do you feel about this? Because everyone wants to ask about your wrist and your injury. Are you gonna do it like once or twice and then be done with it and say I'm done talking about it? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'll ever be done talking about it because it was a it was an event in my life, and um, I mean, I'm I'm okay talking about it. Um, What'd your son say? Uh, well, now he's sweet. Um, for for a while, I was worried he would be scared of me um but now if i put makeup on he's like mommy your boo-boo's all gone oh yeah man did you send your your doctors like flowers i would have um i definitely thank them man. regularly i was like dude thanks for working on the hemorrhoid was, uh, yeah. Flowers. yeah well obviously they you had i mean they were, did a great job at whatever because it really i mean you look i was nervous i'll be honest flawless. with you i know because i, I like was you. too yeah you, yeah I you've been nervous too. for a long time i've been nervous for the last six hours she's like you I, yeah. how about me i was nervous because i do i like you as a person you've been very kind to me and i was like man i don't know what i don't know what i'm gonna do if she comes in and it looks crazy it doesn't it doesn't well thank you and i'm sure that it's made up yeah i've got some plaster on right now it's no big deal like cement spackle well, uh, the record. Sorry, I said cement, didn't I? My husband makes fun of me for saying cement. Oh, the, cement. The the, the, the Preds gonna win the Stanley Cup? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. They are. You're pretty invested in that one, huh? How um, how much of a factor were you in Mike coming back to play? I would say I was the main factor. <laughs> really? In that, yeah. <laughs> um, it was it was very much because he. I mean, for him, and I completely disregarded his emotions in the whole situation. I'm like, yeah, do it. Why wouldn't you want to come back? And, um, you know, he he was like, I just kind of closed that door and I retired and I've got these things that I want to do. And, um, you know, wanted to obviously spend time with us. And but um, I don't know. I was just kind of like, you know, what's what's the worst that could happen? Barring an injury. Let's take that off the table. Please don't get hurt. Um, but, you know, you, you make a run for it, and it's it's a repeat of last year. You know, hopefully not. Um, but I was like, what's the best thing that could happen? And to see somebody who's worked so hard for so long um, at something he loves, you know, I just I want to see him win. Did he stay in good shape? He stayed in good shape for most people, I think. Um, it's It's a totally different training thing. And the way he eats and stuff like that is different, like during the season or when he's prepping for the season. And he, um, I think the first couple of weeks back, he was hurting. Do you guys ever work out together? Do you ever train with him? Um, we have before. We usually just kind of work out in the same space. Um, but like doing I mean, different we've, things. <laughs> we've done we've done team workouts before though, where like somebody is like, it's like run a mile, and you have to do push ups while you run a mile, and. The faster you run, the fewer push-ups you have to do kind of thing. Does he worry about that when you finish being an athlete that you put on a bunch of weight because your body has just been doing the same thing for so many years? Like I have friends that play in the NFL. They have ripped. And as soon as they yeah. stop, they're like, bloop. Um, he is, <laughs> his family is just genetically blessed. And that doesn't happen. They're, I'm like, if, if yeah, 
they they're all just lean and skinny and have six packs and it's disgusting. So what's your son going to be an athlete? Which which genetic did he part did he get? The athletic part? Are you seen that early or the singing, the vocal, whatever that genetic thing is? I have no idea what it is. I, I mean, I kind of hope he is a mix of both. Um, and I I mean I play a little softball in my day. You know? <laughs> yeah, she's athletic. <laughs> Yeah, I'm how not tall, completely in five three. I know it's yeah. I don't I don't think he's gonna be as tall as Mike. I think how I'm, tall is he? Uh, like six one. That's a tall son. He's only like young too. Six one. No, no, I'm I know, sorry. I know, no, no. I don't I know. know how tall my kid is. <laughs> that would be amazing if he was six one. Uh, kids don't measure in inches, which is weird to me. I guess yeah. maybe not him. People always go, how big's your baby? Well, he's 63 inches. Yeah. I think we should all measure in inches so I can compare to babies. He's like 30 pounds. I know that. How old? Uh, three. Oh, my gosh. Three. My son is. <laughs> Amy's son. Amy has a. So she adopted. And her seven-year-old. I told you he's small. Is the size of someone that's how old? Probably four or five. My. Because like, he weighs under 40 pounds. Isaiah's, and Isaiah's small for his his age. Oh, well. see? That's even. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Told you he might need earplugs. Oh, no. The question is, should Amy's seven-year-old wear earplugs at or a concert? The ear canceling sound. The big muffs if we're at a, like a, a big work show. Uh, I don't know. I said no. I don't I don't know if I'd... Like, Isaiah doesn't... This is probably bad parenting, probably telling him myself. Um, when we go to games and stuff like that, he doesn't... He's not going to keep them on. Yeah. You can just keep putting them on him, but he's not going to keep them on. Well, well, Carrie. I'm going I'm to play Cry Pretty in a second. Is the record done? You just haven't put anything else out? Or are you still no, working on it? No, it's almost done. So you're still producing, huh? Comp yeah, those I'm, vocals. I still, yes. I'm, I still have a little a little more to do. And I, wa- I really want to write a little bit more just to see. Just to see. You know what happens? It's hard to stop writing. It's hard to be able to walk away and say, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Well, that treasure spot of writing is writing with you at the very end of the cycle because when you write a song near the end, you get so passionate about that song because you just wrote it. You're like, right. I want to cut that one. Yeah. What's one of the ones that you cut last minute? They ended up being a monster. Um, we're going to throw it on the record last minute. Golly, good girl. Yeah, good girl. Anne, help me out there. Thanks, Anne. Yeah, that was one that we um, might have been like literally one of the last couple that I wrote. And it was. And don't you get so excited about them right at the time you're cutting that you go? Well, I feel like it's a little it's a little harder because it's you like know what the rest of the album is and you've listened to so much music and you've written so much and you've gotten demos in and you've just sifted through all of it. There's a point when you're like, is this good? Is this good? Like, I don't know. Like, I need to step away for a second and come back and listen. And because it just it just you've listened to so much. If you walk into a writing room, do you know the kind of tempo you need? Do you know what your message is or do you rely That's more? Hard. Yeah. Like, what is it when you're walking into a room that you have in your mind? Um, we've tried to do the, this is what I need and this is what we should write thing. And it never works. Um, you just have to go in cause it, it's just whatever the vibe is for the day and how different people are feeling and just what it just kind of all has to happen. Um, cause recently I went in to write and I was like, I really need something that's kind of tempo. And, you know, I, I would love like, you know, this, this kind of song, and we went for it, and we ended up not doing anything. We wrote nothing. And that has literally happened to me. Like, I can count on one hand how many times I went into to write and walked away with nothing for the day. We might we might get a song that's not very good, but we get something. Um, and we just sat and talked, which was nice, too. I like to that. I like to sit and talk. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine for me. Carrie, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having glad me. Glad you're back. Not even from the injury, like just in general. I'm glad Thank you're you. back. Me like, too. <laughs> it feels good. It feels good. This, I mean, it feels good every every time around, but um, it feels good. I need to disappear. Then people will care more. I think so. Because I'm always here every day. Mm-hmm. Nobody cares. Every oh, day I'm here. Nobody cares. Let's just take a few months, you know? I'm going to do like Carrie and just Fine go away. That. That. I'm going to get if in you trouble go away. from your people that <laughs> yeah. are like. <laughs> yeah, I just need it's to the take. the big master plan. Carrie's like, yeah, you also need to disappear. I agree. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we're going to go. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon whenever we get some more, more music out there. Okay. All right, Carrie Underwood. Hey.